we're going to talk about the digital scorecard. Who has a digital scorecard on his mobile device available that says, yeah, this is where I am in the digital transformation today? Yep. Okay. Good. You can aim higher. <laughs> Always. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough question because, you know, the digital transformation is shaping up. It's not kind of uh, as mature as, as we would have loved to be there. There is still a lot of undigitalized information, a lot of digital, undigitalized um, uh, uh, processes that are around and that we, that we need to work on. I just want to start with... Um, getting some interaction going. So this workshop is really about uh, picking your brain, getting your creativity, because I think if you want to aim higher on a digital scorecard, it comes really to a process that's called creativity about your services. This is the city of Amsterdam, right? You, everyone is asking where you're from. I'm from the Netherlands. <laughs> this, is my <laughs> this is my hometown. Um, and and I had a couple of questions, and, 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 for, and I have a disappointing outcome, because I, I, I got a book, <laughs> um, uh, but it's Dutch. And I will tell you all about how that is coming together in this story about the digital scorecard. Yeah? But the thing here is, when I look at the digital picture, um, you know, there is definitely a lot happening uh, with digitalization. Who has been on Schiphol Airport? Yeah, the airport, international airport. Quite efficient, right? Known for you know, how fast everything, how close and nearby everything is. My first question to you is, and think really out of the box, the CIO of this company has significant budget to digitalize the airport. And in my definition, this airport is a 100% service organization. What they own is real estate. And they allow planes to come in, passengers to connect or to enter the country in a secure way. And they basically run that all with kind of service providers that are contracted to do that, from restaurants to, to uh, cab drivers, to uh, luggage handlers, airlines, everything is a kind of service contract. And they have to operate and bring that all together into a service that is perceived as an efficient airport. And the CIO there says, listen, I want to, be the, I want to have the best informed, digitally informed with an app, um, passenger, a tourist or a business passenger, on the airport. I want him to know exactly if he wants to buy a perfume, perfume, where he needs to go, and if he can make that walk to his connecting flight. Sounds simple. So that's where they are thinking. That being said, they are improving their service and providing better digital products, better digital information to this organization, to, to their customers, their end customers, the kind of passengers from the plane. What do you think, and think out of the box, their most innovative change that they implemented to do a better job for their airlines? You got the handling and the repairs and all the, the checkpoints and the inspections, all these kind of processes are there, right? And a plane comes in. What do you think their business case was to say, hey, this is digitalization and we aimed at a much higher point. Give me some, some wild ideas. Really think out of the box. Tough question. What makes it hard to answer that question? Yeah. I, I, I would think that they would major customers returning to that airport as opposed to a different airport. Okay. And how that would show value to their airline. Compare on that core uh, process. Yeah. Okay. Other suggestions? Yep. Many of the airlines actually will get a piece of the retail sales huh? taking place in the airport. That yep. reduces a lot of collaboration and coordination. So the digitization over time typically frees up more retail space within the airport. They're yep. driving revenues and enhancing their Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Try to think of a, of a service that they have to provide and go a little bit beyond their core. You know, we're, we're still on the passengers and the efficiency and those kind of things. It's really something that goes beyond that. How much is this involved? Is their tracking their business flyers or business flyers or something else? Ah, okay. Okay. Tracking is the right, the right angle, but they're tracking birds. And to track birds, they monitor the weather forecast and they predict the behavior from these birds that are at the North Sea. And when the wind is at a strength and goes into a direction and with an angle, and they have a whole model for that, they, they're starting to predict when birds are coming too close to the runways and that create work orders for those guys that go out and they're starting to shoot these birds down because the most impact on planes is when a burn hits the engine. It's a full revision. It's very expensive and it causes delay and it has a major impact on that. So aiming on a digital, higher on a digital scorecard is about thinking this kind of extreme kind of monitoring birds. And they literally have an app where the, the real time movement of birds are projected and the analytics behind that generates a work order, and then you see a car going out, a truck, a car in the Netherlands, <laughs> a truck here in the US, sorry for that. The truck goes out, and they, and they make sure that these, these birds do not come close enough by just sending them the other way around. Is that aiming higher on a digital scorecard? Yeah? So, Immediately when we think about digitalization, we think about the core processes that we need to optimize. Fair enough, that's, that's definitely something you need to do. And all the examples given are uh, being implemented. And you know, I can, I can talk a lot about how they came to that conclusion and how they analyzed and how they figured out that that is a solution because this is, this is really in-depth data analytics on what's causing a delay, what was really the event that was triggering it ultimately and, and honestly, I could not come up with a bird. So don't be <laughs> too, tired, too, too tough with yourself that you, you had, didn't have the answer. But this is a real life example on where, where we're aiming higher. So, so I call that um, uh, picture here uh, my, my city. It's a lovely city. Um, but every time when you look at digital information, uh, you also miss a little bit of that human factor. You know, when I'm in the city, I feel the city. You know what I mean? And when I watch this video, this photo, it's a digital information. It's like, mm, it's not really, really happening. So the, the digitalization here in this example is that it is real life. It, it, it really shows the movement of these birds. There is a little delay, but it's extremely effective because the delay, you know what a delay is, so you can plan on that and you can have these real kind of live information. So you have to bring that not as a st static information to say, oh, there is something happening and now I can do. You really have to monitor real time these kind of movements and then uh, come to the right course of actions. Yeah. So that human factor is, is hindering. So I'm not gonna, gonna talk too much about, about this slide. You know, we have a lot of these kind of ingredients here uh, that, that helps us to, to aim higher. Um, uh, we've seen in the, in the research that cloud is definitely adopted. Um, is, is, are, are, is everyone here adopted in the cloud? I yeah, no one, everyone is really cloud, cloud ready, good. Um, Internet of Things, yeah, we got that information stream coming, coming up. Blockchain, does everyone know what blockchain is about? Yeah? Is that, is, Blockchain, not, not Bitcoin, makes sense, <laughs> yeah? Bitcoin is based on blockchain, and basically what it is, without an authority monitoring transactions and contracts between parties, which basically is a contract and, and, and proposal, a signed RFP or an accepted letter of engagement, which is a contract, basically you digitalize all that stuff underneath and you have a system of records on all sides uh, distribute it where everyone has a real-time view on what's happening with that transaction and in the world. Um, so that's, that's a blockchain technology. It's really 
fascinating to see. So try to think of a service organization where a customer has a problem, we're still in the break fix situation here, has a problem, and there is a kind of clear understanding between all systems, parts of that, these systems to operate and how to work with each other, and everyone has a real-time view what's happening, and, and everyone involved in that, your OEM partners, your contractors, your, your own employees know exactly real time on what's happening with that piece of work and how it will work together. So a lot of good stuff. We talked about a lot about augmented reality, virtual reality, and mobility is there. Uh, machine learning is one of the capabilities that has a lot of potential here to bring you higher on a digital scorecard. Um, but before we continue, I would like to uh, draw a picture on where it is going. Um, Gartner is talking a lot about uh, GE Dig Digital had that capabilities to create your digital twin. So all these technologies are leading towards a kind of situation where you do have an asset, a ship here, that you have to support, and you basically have a 100% reliable copy of that asset living in a computer animation where you know exactly, and with the Internet of Things, if something is broken down or worn out in the real ship, you can project that in your 3D model. And when you have some machine learning capabilities, you can detect these kind of events and trigger a course of action. The digital twin is not restricted to assets when it comes to something really close to everyone, when it comes to what does, does Facebook know or what does Google know about yourself, about you as an individual, they make a digital twin of you, but that run into some kind of privacy issues and concern. Yeah. So more and more cities do have recognition on who is entering my city. I have face recognition, license plate of a car, and now I know where people are. And again, that lovely city, Amsterdam, is starting to do crowd management based on that information. Yeah. So they're planning events outside the city because there are too many tourists packed into the city. So this is not a digital twin that's coming. <laughs> this is really something that is technology available for your assets, uh, but also being used for your behavior and what you are really doing today in the world. So all these technology is leading to that model that we can basically simulate what's going to happen and run scenarios and all kinds of models can be applied um, uh, because, you know, clearly this, this ship is a subject of the weather conditions, the, the, um, uh, the, um, the whole, the, the, where, it's, where it's being deployed in the world. Um, so there are a lot of uh, different scenarios you can do. So the digital twins are there. So this was a, an interesting uh, slide from Col Coleman Park's research where it was a little bit of a surprise. So, I think you two gentlemen, you're from Goodman, right? Telecoms, yeah. <laughs> I saw that. They had a digital scorecard, yeah? And somewhere in the kind of the business impact, so which industry benefits the most today of that digital transformation in economic sense? It's a very interesting analysis here. Telecom, banking and finance, who would have thought of that, <laughs> yeah? Um, public sector, and then manufacturing and utilities here in the end. So there's still a long way to go there to really starting to benefit from these capabilities when you look at the economic impact. Yeah. So um, that being said and understood, uh, the average is there in healthcare, so they're, they're doing a really, really good. And, and, and keep an eye on retail. I come back on my annoyance with the book, right? <laughs> you feel what's coming. <laughs> so that's the question. You know, digital transformation and digital companies, we know Airbnb, Spotify, Uber, and Netflix, and Amazon, you know, well-known, worn-out examples on how they basically change the world and how we distribute goods and, and how we organize uh, transportation. If you just have to, without having a model, without having a kind of reference point here, so it's, it's another tough question. If you have to score your business and performance on a digital scorecard between zero and three. And somewhere in your mind, so it's not, there's no science here, it's not, not, not an economic model behind here, somewhere Amazon is there. So take Amazon as a reference. 
who believes is far above Amazon with the digital transformation? Is it you again? I would, we do work for Amazon. <laughs> and uh, I would say we're not above them, but I would say we measure field technology at a much granular level than they do. Okay, okay. So some aspects are definitely... Yeah, not the end user customer buying preferences. No. We don't get into that, but at the field, field technician level, yes, we do. Okay, okay. And, and, and what makes you, makes you better in that? What, what is it that you do differently than they do? I would say they're, it's a, a nascent group within Amazon that has started to major the, the customer technicians. And uh, it's, it's, it's good, but it's not spectacular. It hasn't blown us away. Whereas we measure, I think, a, a different criteria that I think helps us drive customer satisfaction. And that's why our customer technician Five-star ratings are well above their industry averages. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you compare it with the ratings there that that you can and see. What drives those ratings? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. The five. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 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 who who said oh, no? We're we're really at that lower lower end here. You know. No one. Someone. Everyone in the middle. Not in the middle, <laughs> higher end, lower end. I see you <laughs> lower, yeah. I'd say a, a one. You're really lower than than an Amazon, um, uh, yeah. Okay. Others that are willing willing to give up that. I know we're all professional, but it's really it's 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 a kind of uh, good to understand a little bit on how we perceive that. Yeah. Because Amazon is a pretty pretty good. I think you said it rightful. It's a pretty good digital organization, right? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay, so we're all a little on the, is it fair to say that we're all a little bit on the lower side here? Yeah? Okay, it's hard to say, yeah? <laughs> it's not easy to, to, um, uh, to have that as an, uh, as, an, as an outcome. So just compare a little bit as, as an inspiration source here, uh, a couple of quick, quick examples. Uh, I'm surprised that the financial sector is high on the economic impact uh, when it comes to the digitalization. And honestly and frankly speaking, I see a difference between Europe and the US. I'm still writing my check. <laughs> yeah, you do too? <laughs> yeah, we're still writing checks. <laughs> uh, and I'm enjoying it. Um, um, you know, with other banks, I can do QR code reading and send and receive people from my ba money from my bank account directly, instantly. So they aim a little higher there, and they have the economic benefits there. Um, so the ING organization is an example where the Amazons and, and, and the Airbnb are visiting to see how they organize their organization in terms of agility, um, how they have no hierarchy in their organization anymore. Try to think of that, a bank without a hierarchy. There's still a board, but you're responsible for a business. So they went really out of the box, creative thinking and restructuring their lines of business. So it needs a fundamental change to really benefit from the digital transformation there. You know, and another example, um, uh, oil and energy aviation uh, is here. Manufacturing is where, where it's just a kind of a company uh, that installed uh, sensors in machines that gave them a better leeway. And we've heard uh, examples here earlier from, from Jim as well on stage in the panel discussion about that. So the different examples on how strategies are being, being set across different, different industries. So, so this is how long it takes to digitalize. I don't know if you can comment on, on, on that here somewhere in the group, you know. When I take that banking industry as a little bit of an example, a benchmark, it didn't came in a decade. It really took a long time for them to see that digitalization was the ATM yeah, and now finally the website and the mobile app is starting to take over. It's 20 years that it took them to really reach that level and that economic benefit of um, uh, digitalization. And that whole transition took a long, long time. Um, so, so it's 20 years. I think we can do faster these days, um, 
But the problem here is the heritage of existing customer base. You know, if you have millions of transactions and customers that you need to serve every day or every hour, uh, you know, it's a massive undertaking to change that business and to become, uh, instead of dependent on your branches, uh, become dependent on your website and mobile app. So it's a massive transition that you have to go uh, over. You know, the potential is great. You know, uh, we all know that we're doubling uh, these kind of mobile devices. So everyone has a mobile device in a couple of, of years. So this is really going fast. So we see it's hard to change and benefit from the digital transformation. But the society is adopting this really rapidly. Yeah? This is why an Uber can take over a portion of the cap industry because they just, you know, the taxi business, because they simply, they, they, they introduced something that tapped into this potential. So there is a huge potential there. Um, and and that, that is for every industry. There are a lot of uh, initiatives. I see more and more organizations that said, okay, we do service only. We can help you as a manufacturer with your service. They focus only on these kind of service providing uh, capabilities and they just tap into your you know, um, a database of customers and contracts and help you to do an ultimate, make a better score in customer satisfaction. They specialize in these kind of things. So here is the embarrassing, I'm really proud of my country, but we have the lowest score. <laughs> Who has a clarification for that? <laughs> so when we look at country by country, we see that India is benefiting from the digital transformation way above the Netherlands, which is the last here. I started with a great story about digitalization and aiming higher. What does this tell us? Any? Sorry? Yeah, <laughs> room to improve, yeah. Okay, okay, there are different, there are different uh, interpretations of the data here and different analysis that are all can be true. Um, what, what I really think, and uh, you've seen it in different industries, you know, if you are an early adapter, you're starting to benefit less uh, than when you have just a green field, yeah, and you can start digitalization from scratch. And that's basically what this, I think what this picture represents. So, so when you're already advanced, it's really hard to in an economic sense to benefit, you know, at the same level than when someone in a very immature paper-based operation um, uh, to, to, you know, digitalize. So the good news is that when you have a paper-based or some sort of form of paper-based field processes, you can still beat competition in terms of economic benefits from a digitalization. If you have everything digitalized, you're starting to get a, a real kind of hard, tough game to play to benefit it from a financial perspective. Yeah? So anyone will feel better about a low score right now? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's not that bad, <laughs> still perspective. So, so the economic impact varies a lot. And, and this is really, you know, I was hoping that someone would have guessed my, my Schiphol question right, and then I bought a book. So I went to the most digital retail shop that I know, Amazon.com, right? Uh, I know they have not held this book somewhere in a warehouse. They produced it on my request the minute that I ordered it. We know all that, right? That's how they do it. They have huge printers. I order a book, they produce it, they ship it, and they send it. Me as a customer being used, I do a lot with these Amazon, starting to get a little bit more annoyed and they're starting to lose a little bit of their customer satisfaction because of this. I knew the, I know the author of the CIO 3.0. So my present was a CIO 3.0 book, <laughs> yeah? A lot of inspiration about architecture, about approaches, about technologies, uh, selecting priorities, really good stuff. And I know the two authors of the book, it's published by Van Haren Publishing, which is a Dutch name, you can hear my, my pronunciation. And I checked in the morning, I said, is that an English version of the book available, yes or no? And, the, and it says, language, English, yeah? So I was happy, so I went back in the afternoon, I, sh I ordered the book, it was only $40, $35. It was free shipping, free returns, and I wanna have it on September the 22nd. 
I think, great. <laughs> I got it all on time. So I pushed, I, I checked again if it was in English, and then I had to pay 41.86, and I was expected an estimated delivery on the September 27. And I'm starting to pay more and more attention in it, and I think Amazon is influencing my decision to buy this book real time, real life. They know I will buy this book because I buy a lot of books, so no doubts. <laughs> yeah? And they're starting to influence these kind of things. The good thing is that, what is the day today? It's the 25th, and I'm holding the book. <laughs> Yeah. So the sensitivity of aiming higher on a digital scorecard when you're already up there, uh, you have to get it really, really right every time for every customer, for every transaction. And interestingly enough, I don't know if you've seen that here, the best seller rank. You see what a difference there is in only a couple of hours. You see that? There has been a lot of new books on the list. Do you believe that? <laughs> so there is some data that's starting to be sent. So I'm, I'm looking critically to these kind of processes. I think, ah, it's not right. You know, there has not been 400 new books being issued in only four-hour time. You know, that's, that's not really what it is. So I'm trying to understand a little bit as a consumer, what is it that Amazon is trying to do? They delivered me the product but it's Dutch. So anyone who does a little bit of Dutch, <laughs> that becomes my criteria to hand over this present. So, so apologies for not having this present, um, but I hope you see here how sensitive, uh, it's high score on a digital scorecard, how sensitive your data is uh, for, for, for errors. I'm gonna send the book back and I hope I will get all my money back, including <laughs> the shipping. That's my customer reaction to this. And if not, I'm not really happy. Right? Is that fair? Would you be happy? I checked twice. It was an English book, and it's, it's not. Yeah? So everything, all information is digitalized. I've spoken with no one. I don't know where the company is. I don't know the management. I don't know the warehouses. I don't, I don't know nothing about Amazon. It's only a digital perception, and I'm starting to be very sensitive about getting it right. Yeah? So that's the, the challenge that we're facing here. Let's focus a little bit more on that field service digitalization because that's really where um, I'm on a day-to-day -day basis focusing on how do you get your field service digitalized? And for me, and that's where I want to focus on in, in this workshop, it really becomes uh, between these perceptions. So a customer and a technician, you both know them, yeah? Two stakeholders in a service call, right? And the tension, uh, the urgency perception of a customer at the beginning, before the job, when something goes wrong, this is in the case of break fix, yeah, or installation of a new product, yeah, or you know, just a, a regular appointment for an inspection or 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 a, or, an, or a maintenance job that I want to be completed. I, I expect someone, so the tension and the expectations of the customers are high, that there is a technician coming up, well prepared, know what he needs to do. And for the technician, it's just a routine, right? It, that's what he does. He gets up, starts at eight, <laughs> drives down to the job, and you know, normal, regular day, uh, makes himself known and starts to work through the problem or through the work that he needs to do. So the tension between the two or the urgency perception becomes a little bit more the same when we're starting to really resolve the problem. Diagnose, collaborate, repair, and then I'm, I'm in agreement with this fix or with this problem. And we're starting to get a common picture. And then, and then if the invoice is incorrect or other kind of you know, differences in perception could appear, the tension grows up. So my Amazon example is basically presented here. I expected that book in English to be delivered. It's that simple. It's a service they provide, right? They're not a book publisher, manufacturer, or printer. I expected service, and now I need to pay. I'm still going to send it back, and the tension becomes a little bit bigger. Do you, do you recognize that model in your business? Yeah. Anyone who has, has not, do, does not have this kind of uh, tension in the business, resolved it? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah. well, 
what is the trick that you got a five on that score? Can, can you tell a little bit more in this, in this model? Where, where do you do, where do you excel in this? Because th that's the five, right? What you, that you shared just with us. Can, can I ask you that question? So, so for, for us, it, it's a lot of communication to the customer. So okay. our service for Amazon specifically, it, currently, is TV installation. So a customer buys a TV on Amazon's website, says, yes, I'd like to have professional installation. We get the work order ticket, we communicate with the customer at that point, schedule a service, we show up on time, right? We're, we're, we're very professional, and we, we walk through the customer ahead of time, where we're gonna, where we're gonna put everything, how we're gonna deliver it, show the customer how it works. So really, it's, it's just being that, that deliverable, being very professional, um, and then ultimately ensuring the customer is fully satisfied before we leave. Yeah. And is that communication? Is that, is that all digital? Is that it is through, so a lot of it is through their app. So Amazon has a specific app that, uh -huh. uh, that sellers like us use. So we have a lot of all their work orders. We complete everything digitally. So we get our scorecard. We get everything automatically on our time frames, our SLAs, those kind of things. So yeah. uh, the communication with the customer, both is through email or through their through their app as well. So yeah. uh, a lot of it is. Uh, but there are some phone calls that, that take place. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's only channel. Yeah. yeah. You use every kind of channel to we, we, connect. We do. And we, we over communicate. We, you know, we, we okay. make sure we, we send information. Is that a good thing or is that something? Um, it, 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 it's probably um, comfortable for the customer more so than it is for, for us because it does take another resource coordinator on the back end on yeah. top of the technician uh, just to verify. But we're still in the beginning phases of, of, of rolling out the last six months. So. Wow, great. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Is there anyone else who wants to share a kind of how, how do you... So communication is a key factor here, right? It's, it's, it's not even a digital, uh, uh, not only a digital kind of aspect because you make the physical, physical phone call. Someone is calling you and say, hi, there's someone on his way. Estimated time of arrival is, right? Yeah. Anyone else who has a different concept of solving this kind of... tension between technician customer on a digital way that wanted to share? No? Okay. Well, I can give you uh, a, a little bit of an example here. Um, we, we um, from Gomocha, we, we, we install workforce management systems, solutions, and we have an extremely flexible solution to that, so we can use forms, master data sets, different workflow processes. Uh, we can variate these processes between different OEM and contracts and asset types. So a lot of configuration work that goes in. We don't develop anything of that. We thought that that was an annoying thing for our customers. So we really made it all configurable. Um, what, what I experience personally is before the job and, and at the job site, is that there is a lot of uncertainty between my company and my customer that I get it right. You know, there's a lot of kind of check, checkpoints and it's brand perception, brand value. So the way we came about and solve this is give a digital service to do most important implementation part before a decision is made. Just pilot it in terms of just using it. Not piloting, it's kind of, it's temporary, no full flash. Really get it in, and that's a very comfortable process to resolve the tension between a customer and a technician that needs to, to work with a customer. So that's, that's an example on, on how we do these kind of things. We don't tell customers how to do it, we just do it for them. Yeah? We don't educate them, we just help them. They, they are able to do it themselves, but you know, we definitely support that. Um, Anyone else want to share a quick, quick example? How to, resolve, how to resolve this tension? Something you wish to implement that you're thinking of? Maybe, maybe we can learn if that is something that, that works or, or we have some experience there. Say that in all the organization, we're having to do it in stage to do a lot of uh, record keeping for our customers they want to know how long it took us to respond. They want the timing all documented and obviously very detailed results. And so we're, we're still adapting to capturing that information, but the performance that we uh, achieved is very important to them. Yeah. 
basis. So we have to spend a lot more time on the back end as well. So, so you're basically focusing on an improvement on this side of the equation, right? That's what you're, yeah. So, so that's really, it's, it's extremely uh, valuable because the, the first example is on left hand, <laughs> yeah? On your left hand side of the model, you can definitely do a lot. Um, but there are definitely ways and leeways into improvement on the right hand side. I don't know where it's better to start or, or to end, uh, but you definitely need to work through the whole journey here that's, that's presented. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can get some uh, um, um, small groups discussions here. Um, I told you a little bit about what we do, very limited, um, but what we do really to understand the needs of our customer when it comes to customer experience into the digital maturity assessment, we go through this simple, easy to use checklist. And we literally facilitate a conversation just to talk about the business and talk about the needs. We talk about these bullet points here and ask if there is a low maturity or a high maturity. Not every customer likes that. But when we're in and we're, we're talking about a real problem, it's very interesting to see how we're starting to understand the real strategy of the organization, well articulated or not yet well articulated. And we're coming to an understanding of what they really want to do. Do you want to be in a side of communication or just getting your, your data points right on how you have performed? In the beginning of the end. It's a major difference when you're starting to digitalize to know where you're focusing on and where you really want to see the improvements. So this really helps us to facilitate that and, and, and I think it's good to, um, uh, so, so, so we talk about different channels. Um, so I use the word omni-channel in your example already. Yeah, you're trying to reach out through many possible channels with a customer by email, by phone, um, digital through a website. Uh, how much knowledge do you really have about your customer? Yeah? So think about that app um, uh, example with the birds. That's, that's a, a lot of in-depth knowledge about what is your customer satisfaction really driving. You know, it's an industry problem that these birds get into these planes. They crash into them all the time. Um, and, and it's not new to to influence the behavior of the birds, but it's really sophisticated to do it real time and be proactive about it, yeah? So how much do you really know about your customer? Do you have some segmentations? Um, uh, is there an integrated customer engagement strategy? Uh, how do you really ultimately communicate with your customer? Is there any kind of customizations? Is it just you send the bill or the report as you just mentioned? So what kind of variations do you have? And what I suggest, for the next 10 minutes um, to break up in small groups. So maybe I think we can make three groups. Uh, so if we, if we combine a group here and one here and then one there at, at the back, uh, have a discussion about uh, and share some knowledge about where, where you think your organization is uh, or where you want it to be. Uh, and then we circle back with a little bit of a debrief on these topics and this is only the customer experience. So I do have another, another checkpoint here on the uh, operation model. So how do you run your business? Yeah, is that, is that a, a good step forward to break up in small groups and have this workshop um, uh, around these kind of KPIs, criteria, and see where you score and exchange experiences and uh, where you stand? We're uh, circling back uh, here a little bit, and, and the scale of the business was we had the same problems, but on a different scale and a different, yep. different impact, basically. Yeah? That was a key, key finding here. So, so did, you, did you come to the same conclusion? Or? I think we, from a point of not having surveys to having fully vetted surveys, like in the Goodman team here, um, we would all like to be at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we've had different levels of success just in a based on the businesses, okay. uh, the business models. Trying to figure out how each one does that and how they capture those surveys yeah. and also finding out how the business works. Yeah. Because we, we've got some dealer networks here, we've got some manufacturers, we've got some aftermarket, and OE, you know, OEM blend, so it's a full blend of businesses here. So, so hard to compare a kind of common denominator in, in the discussion there, but 
fully fed customer. We're low on that end. <laughs> Digitally mature, we're very low in yeah. our business, and I think these guys are probably very high on the digital side. So. With, without owning the customer. Yeah. So, so without, that's the trick. We, we don't own the customer, though. So, no. so that you, we do have some limitations, yeah. a constraint from that standpoint. Yeah. Okay. If you had a 1.5, that would be great. We'd be a 1.5. Yeah. So would you would you go if you if you score that just a little on a 1.5? So that's uh, that's the save in the middle. Oh, for two of us here. Yeah. Is it is it all all the same or is there one that's really already accelerator and and one that's that's lower? All the bills are email. It's, it's, it's all kind of in the middle. It's all electronic uh, invoicing. Uh, so we invoice our QuickBooks. So that okay. Digital. Yeah. <laughs> but the manual process to get it into the digital uh, yeah. pipeline is I, I walk into the accountant's office and I turn around and walk out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. His okay. stacks on his desk change every week. Yeah, so is a, is a fair conclusion to, to aim higher at a digital scorecard that it is, you know, everyone has his own kind of maturity level and that's basically what we're bumping into here that that is a kind of hard to come to a kind of understanding, but, but I hear some good lessons learned, some fully fetched uh, customer feedback, uh, digital, I assume with Goodman now with the five, yeah? <laughs> Everything digital and ready to analyze the data and the digital form of an invoice. There are a lot of different maturity levels uh, around the table that's, that's basically uh, uh, hindering us. And here was the scale, right? Yeah, okay. Someone who said, oh, I, took, I took something out of this that was really kind of great and, and I want to share that with the group. Yeah, you, you yeah? What, what was the, the major finding? Well, I mean, I guess you know, the, the, the mid-level stuff is the biggest thing that we talked about. The you know, money in the water is too many levels of the middle. Not enough between the client, you know, too much between the client and wants versus needs. Yeah. The top, the top level. Yeah. You know, getting approvals for things you'll never get an approval for simply because no one sees it at the top level. Everyone sees it here, everyone sees a need, but no one up here wants to admit it or, or you know, they want something else, bring something else to the table. Yeah. By the time you're, you're doing that, you've lost lines. Yeah. Okay, here's my Good, good. Okay, um, we're, um, we're doing uh, a little bit over time here, so um, I just wanna, wanna uh, wrap this workshop up and, and, and thank you for all for the contribution uh, and uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, um, there is a, there's lunch now, right? Is that, is that correct? And yeah, in the exhibi exhibition hall, eh? It's outside and then the exhibition hall is open. Yeah, so thank you for your attention and um, I'll see you later today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.